Welcome to the Workbench After Hours podcast. My name is Keith and I'm your host. This is where we talk about the firearms community, shop talk, and everyday life experiences. Welcome back to another episode of the Workbench After Hours podcast. This is episode 35 and you'll see that's not Hunter. <laughs> no, uh, this not. is actually my good buddy, uh, Jacob. He's been, I, I think I've known you since what, fresh, your freshman, freshman year, freshman year, my yeah. junior or my sophomore year of yeah. high school, right? Yeah. So yeah, so he's a big gun nut. So he's here to talk guns and whiskey with us. So yeah. welcome Love to the both. show. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So when you brought the whiskey for the week. I did. What'd you bring? Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Nice. It uh, apparently is finished in a second heavily toasted barrel. And Woodford is one of my favorite just regular whiskeys, so mm-hmm. I figured we'd try one step up. Heck yeah. Yeah, that was, I think we did an episode where we said what our favorite is so far, and this is, yeah, def- up there. Woodford's yeah. been one of them. Yeah. Yep. Knob Creek is another one for me that's way up there. Mm-hmm. Chris has something against Knob Creek. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> it yet. <laughs> well, cool. And we're going to try something different. We're going to try it neat first, so let's see if we can get more of the flavors that you're supposed to before we put it on the rocks, so... I think that's one problem that we've run into is that we immediately try it on the rocks and I think that <laughs> takes away from a lot of the taste that we're supposed to be getting. So, yeah, yeah I'll let you start pouring it. Don't mess up your own camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, excited to try this. Hunter, uh, I don't know what he's doing. He bailed last second on us <laughs> again. At least this time it's not his anniversary. Right. Yeah, I've, this has been like on my list of ones that I want to get. I've been eyeballing it for weeks. I figured this is a good time to try it. All right, try it. Let me know what you think, taste. It's pretty smooth for 90 proof. It's really smooth. Yeah. I think it's smoother. I tried... Blanton's for the first time right before this. I think it was smoother than the Blanton's was. It's 90.4 proof. Oh, man. But yeah, you could definitely tell afterwards that proof. You could tell. Yeah. You could, it has a more afterburn for yeah. sure, but the immediate, there's less bite. Yeah, it's got a real sweet flavor yeah. well, at the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. Like a, like you can definitely tell like a brown sugar almost. Yeah. It's good. I like it. Yeah. So I'm going to put it on the rocks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so Jacob... uh usually have the guests enter, you know, talk about their background in guns, how you got into guns and all that stuff. How'd you, what's your, uh, I've always been fascinated by guns. I had a lot of uncles and cousins that hunted. My dad had a couple of guns growing up, but never really mentioned that he even had them to me. Um, but he supported me getting into hunting and stuff. And that started by letting me buy BB guns, then taking a hunter safety course. And then when I was 11, um for christmas i got my first 22 that i still have today um and then i got into upland hunting after that so i got uh, a couple shotguns um and just upland hunted for several years it was the only couple of guns i had was two different shotguns and then that 22 and then uh as i got older i wanted to branch out into more stuff probably 22 or 23 i bought my first glock bought a police um one of the police carry guns that was heavily discounted back at OMB back when they were right. Like I think it was under 300 bucks for the gun and had night sights and stuff. Those on police trade ins you can get good deals on. Yeah. yeah. And then I eventually wanted to get into ARs as they got more popular and I built a couple of those along the way. So Heck I've yeah. always been into it. Started with hunting. I don't really hunt anymore. I've, I've tried a bunch of different stuff and I would only continue to hunt what I would want to eat like ethically. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. not, I don't, I'm not about like going and killing stuff just to kill stuff. Right. I don't have that drive, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, more power to you for whatever, whatever reason you're hunting. But I, that just isn't for me. I've tried duck hunting. I don't like the taste of duck. I would quail hunt again. I don't want to ever skin a deer or anything like that again. That just isn't <laughs> for me. So a large game is out for me because I'd, just can't get into gutting an animal and I don't feel right killing an animal and then not keeping it for food. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's 
like Chris is like, oh, we want to get into hunting, but I'm like, dude, you know, neither one of us are going to be able to skin a deer. <laughs> I don't but, have the, I don't have the stomach for that like, type of stuff. Not even it's like you could bring it and have somebody skin it for you, but the fact that you have to like gut it and like have it bleed out there, I yeah, yeah, you have to at least drain the blood and take it to a butcher, and even that, like, it, it's it's a lot. And like, there's those crazy stories too. Like, guys, I know want to go elk hunting. Well, if you're back in the woods, half the time they have to cut an elk in half and then and carry it out in yeah. two halves. I, I there's no way I, I could do that. I just, I don't have that in me. Yeah. But bird good. hunting, I do enjoy. And I enjoy like quail to me tastes a lot like just gamey chicken. Same thing with pheasant. And I do enjoy hunting behind dogs, but I don't, I'm not going to invest the money in dogs. But if someone says, Hey, we're taking out the dogs. If you want to go, yeah, I'm down, but I don't want to go chase my own birds either. That's, that's a lot. And I belong to a duck club. Uh, one of my exes, um, her dad, owned a house a private house and private duck club on 40 acres where like concrete blinds that were heated they'd make sausage egg and biscuit sandwiches in the blind and have coffee right there you're sitting on an office chair i mean it was it was me and a bunch of lawyers and doctors (laughs) and stuff i I just got lucky to get into it and i enjoyed the experience but the several times we got ducks i just absolutely hated eating them so i didn't continue but yeah ducks you gotta cook it just the right way or else yeah it's not very good. The The best that we ever did was like they would grill it with a bunch of hot sauce as an appetizer. So you weren't eating like a whole meal of it. And that wasn't bad. And that was pretty typical because we wouldn't get a lot of ducks there. There was a lot more just hanging out with the guys than there was actually killing ducks. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. So I, I don't know, Chris, you're on your own. Come on, man. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. I mean, I like I've had deer jerky once a long time ago, but it, from what I remember, it was really good. Yeah, I enjoyed deer meat it's the i don't want to clean a deer mm-hmm. yeah for me but and turkey i love turkey but i don't know <laughs> if i want to clean a bird that big either the, something about the quail is easier for me i mean it's still a lot of work but well and i you know a lot of people go on those big um boar hunts down in texas yeah do they just go there and kill them just because they're i think because they're an invasive species i don't think that everybody most of the guys aren't keeping them for meat I think you could keep it for me. Yeah, I think I you could make bacon and stuff I've, out of I've it. I wondered that because people go on those excursions and they're, they do those hell of a hunts. Like, and I think stuff. they're it's illegal technically... to hunt all year round down there. Yeah, because they're so, so invasive yeah. and they'll kill other pets and yeah. livestock and stuff too. I know people that have done that where they killed them with knives, like they hunted with knives and jumped down on them. It's like that's <laughs> that's a little too far. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that in me. Or you got something get wrong with you at gourd. that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to Rambo things. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. All right, look out for this guy. Yeah. But yeah, because I I would assume it's somewhat like a pig. Like yeah, you know it probably. Tastes like, I think it would taste a lot like pig. Probably a lot gamier. Maybe, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I would think it'd be the same. I, I mean, know. and bacon is just fat. I mean, fat's got to be yeah. close to the same. It's got to be bacon. I mean, similar. Well, same thing with the coyotes. People are always like, "Oh, I killed you know X amount of coyotes." I think they do it just to yeah. do it right. Yeah, I've I've hunted coyote before. We didn't we had one that we called in, but we didn't get a good shot on it. But that was to protect animals that we were on a farm and the farmer wanted us there. So Yeah. And it was cool. It's the only time I've ever hunted behind an AR fifteen. So it was kinda <laughs> neat. Like it, Wait. Did you just say you hunted with an AR fifteen? Yeah. I did. So you can actually hunt with an they AR. They have a purpose. No. Yeah. And the coyote is a great purpose. Joe for Biden it. says you can't hunt with one of those. Nobody <laughs> hunts with those. Yeah. It's a varmint. It's impossible. Oh. <laughs> Proof right there. We got it on record. You can hunt with an AR. Yep. Do you use a? Did you use a specific type of round? Uh, no. We just were using ball ammo, but we never took took a shot. So, we did have a really nice electronic call that that brought coyotes in like crazy. But they wouldn't. They I think they could smell us. Like we we were just laying down on top of like a makeshift blind, and I mean you could definitely get our scent <laughs> in all directions. You just spray that stuff <laughs> no. on you. No, it was a very last minute deal that we had the opportunity, so we went out there. So we were hmm. we were just out there target shooting and then got the opportunity from a neighboring farm that was like, Hey, I've got a coyote problem if you if you wanna nice. hunt. And we're like, sure, we'll sit out there. And we sat out there most <laughs> of the evening. I and mean, it was still really relaxing watching sunset and being out in nature. So nice. I enjoy that part of it. Over here behind us, there's a kind of an area that's county yeah. with, with some stuff. There's a every night if you're outside, you hear this pack of coyotes. Like and they're loud. Yeah. It's kind of I've never seen them around here, but you can definitely hear them. I don't know if you've heard them here, Chris. I've heard them and I've actually seen a couple like Have off you? the highway coming into work sometimes in the morning. I'll see them. They'll right off the highway. I'm like, geez. 
on that neighborhood app, we've had foxes show up on our like neighbors' yep. ring cams and stuff. Nice. So those are cool to see. Though. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't like with coyotes. I'm like, as long as you leave me alone, I don't care. I was walking when I lived in the apartment. We lived by uh, Indian Creek Trail. I was walking my dog, and one just we were actually in the neighborhood part of it, and one just kind of came up, ran right by us. Like I was like crap this is gonna go bad yeah. like my dog and this coyote are gonna get in a fight or something nope it just kind of looked at us and just kept going that's crazy i'm like all right now well. what do you expect from yeah from an animal like i mean that? it was it was definitely a full-grown adult so i'm like Ooh. yeah but i'm like hey if they don't mess with me i don't have a problem yeah <laughs> you know we especially in our old neighborhood we had a lot of rabbits and squirrels and stuff it's like whew, hopefully they'll diminish that and <laughs> yeah it's like come on come go eat those instead of my dog freaking eating the damn bunnies and getting worms it's like i'd rather the coyote take do its job yeah, yeah it's we have a ton, chain, right? ton of small animals like that in our neighborhood too that's probably why we have the foxes yeah yeah but because everybody's killing off all the coyotes mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but well cool um so what how many guns have you is in your current collection and what's your favorite one or I guess before that, do you have the trifecta? I do have the trifecta. Okay, what's your trifecta? <laughs> so I have two shotguns. I have a Charles Daly. It's a it's a long barrel. I think it's like a twenty six inch barrel um, turkey gun. Shoots three and a half inch loads, and I've had it for a long time for just turkey hunting. It's a pump. Um, not not a gun I like. I would like to probably get it out of my collection and something different because it has such a long pull on the pump that. It's okay for a turkey gun because you're gonna take one shot, you know, maybe <laughs> two. But if you had to cycle it for like Upland or or even a home invader, that round doesn't always go back in on the second pump, and it's pretty frustrating. Um, but I've had that gun for years and years. It was just cheap back in the day, and I wanted a turkey gun just to try it out. So um, recently, just bought a Maverick eighty eight Cruiser, so the pistol grip Mossberg twelve gauge. Okay. Um, got a good deal on it and I'd like to have a home defense shotgun cause I don't have, cause I have a 26 inch barrel. So <laughs> yeah, not, not great good. for walking around <laughs> your house with it. No. Won't fit through a door sideways unless it's like this. So, <laughs> um, I still have that 22, uh, rifle that I've had since I was 11. I'll never get rid of that gun. Um, I have a sub 2000 I bought for the wife in nine millimeter that takes Glock 19 mags. And that was specifically on the 1808 bill. It was, big I saw that, which is crazy that the pc9 is on the exception list and right. they are almost the exact same gun like, they are just the <laughs> kill tech looks scarier yeah probably because it takes clock mags and the ruger actually <laughs> has an adapter to take multiple they'll take more mags mm -hmm. because you can put glock mags in it or you can take the adapter out and you can put ruger mags in it mm -hmm. so it's yeah. actually a more versatile gun that's how smart these people are it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> make sense at all but sub 2000 is actually surprisingly accurate and a lot of fun to I've, shoot. I've wondered how they are because they're relatively cheap yeah and they're basically all plastic for the yeah. most part i got mine on a sale too for like under 300 bucks so i, I couldn't pass that up now they're <laughs> i think mid 400s but and i also have i i have in pistol wise i have a glock 17 that i bought like my first hand gun that was that police trade-in and then i went with a carry gun that was a glock 19 um and so i have all these mags for those guns and they translate right into the sub 2000 so i didn't have to go buy a bunch of magazines to run that gun that's also helped me get yeah. into that one. <laughs> um, and then I have a Thompson Center 308 bolt action that I just bought for plinking. Like I, like I said, I don't really hunt anymore, but I wanted something just bolt action to shoot, and it was on sale. So, um, And then I have two ARs. I have a AR pistol that I put together myself. That's uh, It's an Anderson lower. I got super cheap on a Palmetto State Armory 10.5-inch kit with a pistol brace on it mm -hmm. surprisingly accurate little clunky the buffer spring i should probably change out it's real heavy and makes a lot of noise but pretty accurate gun it, it'll run better than the sub 2000 will um and then my main is a delton which was the first ar that i ever built and i'll never get rid of that gun either i, I got a delton lower i didn't know anything about ars at this point and this was when the internet was a little bit freer and you could just get on <laughs> youtube and mm -hmm. watch how to put together an ar-15 I just rewatched this video. I bought a Delton kit to match the lower because I, at the time, I'm like, well, 
it should match, not yeah. knowing that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I was just like, I want it all to be the exact same. And now it doesn't match at all. I've changed it out so many times. It's got an M lock free float on it and a Geisley trigger. And so it shoots a lot better than it did. Um, and it's got all Daniel defense hardware on it. So nice. And then I had a Hollison for it, but I'm not a fan of the Hollison. It was one of the ones that has the uh, little solar panel on top that runs and that thing works great, but the batteries, they die just sitting in my safe off. So when, if it's nighttime and you go to turn the Hollison on, I have no dot and I, I did not want that. So I took that back off and I'm just running, uh, sites right now, just, uh, flip up sites until I figure out what I'm going to do next. I have the Holosun for sale. So that's just a, just the regular red dot, right? That one. Yeah. Yep. I like the six Romeo five. Yeah. I like those. I got like a stack of them in the, cause they were really, they were selling like crazy during COVID. And all yeah. of a sudden now I can't sell them, but I got like a stack of them. Well, we, but may, I, we may have to talk after cause I'm looking for something to replace it, but I love it. We put it on that Tavor when yeah. we were, took that out shooting and I like it. The, you know, it's a SIG product. So yeah. uh I know I've been always hesitant with Holison just because it's like, is this gonna be reliable or good? <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, I I, it was the opposite of what I thought. I figured it will function like any red dot will. And I bet that the solar part is iffy. Mm -hmm. But no, it, you can take the batteries out of it. And if it's sunny out, that thing runs amazingly. But <laughs> at batteries. night, it, it and w that's that's what I worry about is what if I had to grab the gun mm -hmm. at yeah. night? It's my, I mean, it's my favorite rifle. I'm really versed, like comfortable with it. So if someone did break in, it'd probably be the first thing I grabbed. I don't want it to be in the evening and then I have no night sights. Like that's, right. yeah. <laughs> It's not I, good. Hoping and praying. I, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if the SIG has the shake wake, like just shake it and it yeah. turns on. I can't remember, but. Yeah, this had that. And I, and I didn't even run that. I would turn it all the way off and my battery would still be dead. And the batteries aren't, they're watch batteries. It takes like three or four of them or something ridiculous. It's, they're not cheap to keep buying yeah. a dozen <laughs> of these things every time I take the rifle out. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, I'll show you one downstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've installed it because I have made built a, several ARs and I put those on several of them and they sell and like those are pretty popular I, and they're like you know a hundred bucks or so yeah see the Holoson was like three hundred bucks and that was like on sale it does have the uh, I forget what it's called the honeycomb thing to stop like glint and stuff yep so it's one of the nicer ones with you know the pop up you know covers and everything but it it just isn't reliable enough for me. Chris and I have always wanted an ACOG. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After we uh, shot, who was that? Kyle's? Yeah, we shot his at the oh, range. Oh, my God. He's, he's actually in the, I have in my rifle, though. <laughs> yeah, he's in the military, so he brought one, and we're like, damn, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the Delton, there. as far as, like, a budget AR goes, I've had that rifle for eight or nine years now. Probably put 4,000 rounds through it and haven't had a single problem. I mean, the upper is almost stock other than the M-Lock handguard. So the internals are still all original Delton. I haven't had a single jam. I haven't had anything break in it. So I'm real happy with Delton. That's good. Yeah, because they're more of the budget friendly. Oh, yeah. You yeah, can right, buy a sure. rifle kit for 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to buy the lower separately, but still. Nice. Yeah. So, and speaking of guns, it but was yeah. your idea to do the gun of the week topic, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> so he's the one that gave us that idea. And, and so we've done it. And so... We're going to have you do the gun of the week this week. This and you week. actually brought it. I did. <laughs> what do we I, got? I actually always bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my uh, my carry gun, which is a Glock 19 Gen 5. Um, it is the MOS, so you can put a reticle on it. But as much as I'd like to run a reticle, I don't want to carry a reticle in my waistband. I feel like it's just going to be more to imprint or stab me in the side. And I, <laughs> I don't always carry the same. If I'm walking around, I prefer to appendix carry. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, if I'm like riding around in the truck or going to be in and out, I like it on my hip. It just seems to ride a little easier there for me. Um, it just is like stabbing you if you sit down for too yeah. long in appendix <laughs> carry. But if I'm walking around, I'd rather it not like grind against my hip with a tight belt. I'd rather have it in the front. It just seems more comfortable. So I don't think that would work with a reticle on it. What made you go Gen 5? Uh, I actually traded an AK I had for this, but I was, was looking for just a Glock 19 Gen 5. What made me stick with the Gen 5 is the trigger. The trigger is a lot nicer than my Gen 3. Gen 4 is the exact same trigger, from what I understand, as a Gen 3. Mm -hmm. So the trigger is a lot smoother. Um, Glock, I my, my original 
Gen 3 I like the grip of better, and I don't know if it's because it's longer or if it's the style of the Gen 3 grip. It has the uh, finger, finger grooves. grooves. Yeah. Gen 5 does not. Yeah, yeah. and I do I, – I feel a little bit more comfortable with my 17, but it, it's hard to say because it's a longer barrel gun. I wouldn't want to carry it in the summer. I mean, that's a big that's a big carry gun, it is. in my opinion. But I have larger hands, and I've tried shooting, like, the 43, the 43X, and I, I don't trust it enough other than – if I was going to put it into your chest from – you know, three foot away, I'd feel comfortable with it. But to shoot twenty yards, I'm not. I just don't. Do you ever feel try the twenty six? I have not tried the twenty six because that's it's. You still get the double stack, yeah, full frame, but the grip's shorter, but it's yeah. still just as fat. I like it. Yeah, I I would like to try one. And when I originally decided to go with my seventeen, I actually really like the look of the Beretta ninety twos. Like they're one of my favorite. Just stylish looking handguns and that's what i wanted i went to buy one and uh, i went up to the bullet hole and they're like well for five bucks you can rent any and every pistol we have so i bought like 200 rounds of nine mil and i shot probably 14 different handguns Mm -hmm. and i by far shot the glock 17 the best so then i ended up deciding to buy a glock 17 off of what i shot not off of what i thought looked cool (laughs) because i'm buying that for a purpose not right yeah and since then i've it this transfers right to that i shoot this gun almost as well as the 17 and i would trust my life behind this gun and if you've watched any of uh lucas from t-rex arms he said that the only handgun he would trust his life with out of the box without touching it is a glock because they just they always run well right from when you buy it and most people would agree with that, but you still have that little group of Glock haters. Oh, it's yeah. like, and they're ugly guns. Like I'm not. There's nothing pretty about a Glock. There are Gucci Glocks that do look good mm-hmm. and have some cool features. But even modifying a Glock, I've shot some of them. They're really cool, awesome range guns. I'm not putting a three and a half pound trigger in my carry gun to where something happens and it drops and goes off. Mm-hmm. I, I like the way it's set up. It's made so that if police carried it and they dropped it, it wouldn't go off. It's that way for a reason. It's Glock perfection. <laughs> Some people disagree with this, but I think it's the AK of pistols. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can run that thing through everything, and it still works. And, yeah. Yeah, I've never had either of my Glocks fail. My, I, God knows how many rounds is through that 17. I've put probably 4,000 through it, and it was a police carry gun before that. So. Yeah, and the cool thing is they're so popular, parts are readily available, yeah. Yeah. and they're easy to work on. Replacing a you know firing pin isn't anything or yeah. the sights. Um, I know the grip texture on that isn't as aggressive on yeah. like the Gen fours. Um, I don't know because so I've I've really come to like which I haven't shot it yet, but just by feeling it and all the stuff I've done on it is the Hellcat Pro. Yeah, uh, I like Springfields. I don't have a problem with it. My wife loves Springfields, but if I had to choose, like, hey, you got to have one gun. Uh, your life depends on it. That's it. Probably be a Glock 19. Yeah. So. If I was to clear my house, I would. I'm like my bedside gun is the 17, just because the larger it fits my hand perfectly. Like that's it feels really comfortable. And that gun has night sights too. This gun I should put night sights on it, being that it's my carry gun. <laughs> I just haven't got around to it yet. But uh, I would probably go to my 17 if I had to only have one gun to clear a room or like I have an outer waistband. A holster for it and i would if i was running that for some reason like end of the world scenario i would carry my 17 but to conceal i there's no way that 17 it imprints like crazy it's uncomfortable as can be with with the long handle so this is the most gun i would hide but from what i understand too i think it's the most sold handgun in america oh yeah mm-hmm. and there's have you tried any of the single stack versions of that like they came out with like the 48 and i've tried the smaller ones like the 43 and the 43 x those are terrible 43 those are terrible (laughs) i have a 43 as my i got that because that for like summer carry yeah and it's one of those it's like great because it's small thin compact try to shoot that thing (laughs) yeah after shooting Mm -hmm. it i think i would honestly prefer one of the like lc9s over it they they're more comfortable to me than than the glock which was surprising so you have a ruger right yeah i got a lcp custom Yeah. yeah but I hate that thing. It's real finicky on ammo. I've noticed too. Like yeah, certain ammos it'll jam with it. And I'm like, uh, I think a lot of the small guns, you're not supposed to run plus P and stuff like yeah. that too. Yeah. It's Chris just real weird. Has a really sweet looking Glock 19. Yeah. All flat, dark earth. I love it. 
Yep. Nice. I haven't my, got to shoot it yet, but I love it. My cousin, I saw my cousin one several years ago, and his is the all gray Cerakote. Yeah. Which they don't do that anymore. So it. I would good. really like to get one of the like battle worn flag ones. Oh yeah. Oh, I can get Those you are, one. Those are really cool. <laughs> they also, I was before I was got my Glock. I was looking. They got like you know the vinyl wraps for cars. Yeah. They got them made for Glocks now. That's cool. And so you get like a the flag or the we the people. Yeah. And just it goes right on top yeah Already i would love to good. build a gucci glock too that yeah. just 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 for the range for fun but I, like i said i wouldn't carry something yeah. with a, a light trigger that just yeah. scares me <laughs> yeah and the glock single stacks i don't know it's like the double stack just fits in my hand better yeah and i'd rather have you know deal with having to carry something that's a little thicker that i'm comfortable with holding and getting a g- good grip on versus something that yeah, it's thinner and smaller, but I'm not going to get a good grip. It's not comfortable. I'm not going to shoot it well. That Glock 43, I would sell it, but I have it's like I have a custom Cerakote on it, like yeah. the the burnt bronze slide. Do you have the uh, the the magazine with like the, the longer pinky. grip? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I can't the, I can not shoot that thing without that. It right, it's so hard to shoot without that. On the ex, uh, pinky extension, I got that coated yeah. in. Uh, <laughs> that that color too yeah. it looks awesome it's a sweet gun got some really cool tritium sights on there i'm like i got a lot of money in this gun so i, I probably won't sell it but yeah i just after talking with um jessica from eclipse holsters she sent me a, a, a holster for the hellcat pro because i requested one and i bought another hellcat pro nice. the business bought a hellcat pro <laughs> but i bought it because it comes they're doing the thing now where you get the gear up sale so you get three extra mags plus a pistol case yeah, I saw. Uh, that. I I was considering it because it's it's like five hundred bucks for all that, from what I saw. Actually, I can get. I can. That's a good deal. Get it for you for cheaper than that, <laughs> and then you get the we can do the rebate thing. Yeah, and it comes in my because I did the rebate and it's like eight to twelve weeks, but yeah, they're all. And it's like cool because like it already has the freaking tritium front sight. Yep, it's got an RMR cut. It's double stack, but still thinner than a Glock nineteen by just a little bit. And you have yours here. here already. I got two of them here. Yeah, I'd like to see it after. Yeah. I haven't held one in person. Oh. I like it. And I, this isn't a big deal, but where you put your index finger, you know, when you don't have your finger on the trigger, you kind of put it on yeah. the frame. There's like an indent there with uh, some texture. I, that just feels so comfortable to me. I like it just because of the texture on it. Mm-hmm. It feels like the MP 2.0, which yeah. I love. Yeah, it's more of a, I guess, kind of sandpapery finish. Yeah. And it's like if if... Something happens, you're gonna be like adrenaline rushing, but my hand, I get sweaty hands. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get a better grip on that than a Gen Five Glock that isn't as grippy. Yeah. So I don't know. I like it. I've never had. I've always owned a Springfield. My first gun I shot was a Springfield. I bought two right away. I've never had an issue with Springfield. So those are. See, I was anti Glock for the longest time. Yep. <laughs> yep. I kept. I'll buy one. Nah, I bought. A SIG, and then I bought two FNs after that. See, I think, like you said, it is the AK of handguns. Like, yeah. it's a great comparison because I wasn't big on AKs at all, and I had a buddy that he was obsessed with them, and I shot three of his AKs at the range in one day, went out and bought an AK that week. <laughs> I, was like, I, I have to have an AK. Like, they run so well. Yeah. They and could. They're, there's so much power behind that compared to an AR. It's crazy. To me, they're not comfortable to shoot. Like, especially if you get one with the woodstock. Like- yeah, I didn't shoot any. Mine were all highly modified. And the one I bought... Had the Mokev stock, which by Magpul. So it had a rubberized, foldable, long rear stock. Gotcha. And then it had the long forehandle. And I feel like I've shot the short forehandle ones, and they don't feel comfortable as like long as my arms are. I like having my hand out further. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it again without a long front like fore, oh, yeah. foregrip on it. I sold a AK pistol. Yeah. Or no, I didn't start. I bought one before the gun business when I was still just buying guns just to buy guns. I they bought it. so AK. loud. They, <laughs> I sold it because I'm like, this is ter-. <laughs> like, it was cool because at the time it was like 400 bucks. Now they're like going for like 900. Oh, tell me. Plus. About yeah. I, want, I like, wanted an arsenal and oh man, I'm kicking myself for not paying $1,200 for a Sam seven because <laughs> now they're two grand. I was like, I should have fucking kept that gun because I could have more than doubled my money on it. But uh, at the time gun prices were low so i got it and it's didn't i refinished the handguard and i'm like this is more of a non-practical gun just a fun gun kind of thing because why not yeah but we took it to the indoor range <laughs> my god 
Like I would, sh- it sounded like a freaking hand cannon. <laughs> and then the fireball that comes out the end was crazy. Like I would shoot it. And the people that are not in the range, but they're like behind the glass and like in the, at the, the front, you know, where the lounge is at center fire, everybody, like I turned around and everybody's staring at us like, <laughs> what the hell? Like it was, uh, Probably you know, when you get somebody people. that shoots a 308 <laughs> or high power next to you, that's a big, yeah, this was even worse. Like, or a 12 was, gauge and you're not expecting yeah. it. Yeah. This yeah. was like. It was not comfortable to shoot. I'm like, <laughs> my worst range experience ever was at center fire. It was a kid that paid for like the, they have a package of guns. Like you go through a series of different full autos that you get to shoot. Mm-hmm. Really cool. The last gun you finish with is a 50 cal. And they laid a mat out on the end of the range, three spots down from us. They don't say, Hey, we're about to fire a 50 cal with iron sights <laughs> and paper. And all the ammo in the room would bounce three inches off the ground every time he shot. I mean, with your hands covering your earmuffs, it hurt. It's like, uh, thank you for, I'm paying by the hour. Like, yeah. I really appreciate not being able to shoot for 15 minutes. <laughs> and here afterwards. Yeah. Like, yeah. just, and if you're behind the gun, you're fine. It's the gases and everything that are coming out from the side of that oh, yeah. freaking, that's the gun, the gunpowder smell was unreal after that. I mean, <laughs> they shot. 20 rounds of 50 cal. Oh, man. I would love to shoot a 50 cal. I am never going to shoot one indoors. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Like, I, my ears are so bad. Like, I got tendonitis really bad. And if I shoot too long, then my ears do this weird thing. Like, everything, like, the tone goes funny. Yeah. So, I have to shoot outside now. Yeah. I prefer to shoot outside by far. It's, there, it's just so much more that, comfortable. You don't have that concussion. Well, that, you don't have and, someone over your back watching every little movie you yeah. do. And, like... I've been at the range where people have shot the the wall of their lane, and it makes me nervous. It's like, what if they came back one yeah. more foot? That's me. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. There's been a lot of accidents, but my go-to if I'm – because you were saying if you're going to clear a house, you're 19. Mine is – what's I guess in my nightstand is the Glock 21. Yeah. Because I have a suppressor for it. And I don't want to blow my ears out yeah. if I'm clearing a house. <laughs> so <laughs> I got a flashlight on there. I got a suppressor on there. Now, if you were to have to use that in a self-defense situation, I don't know what the laws are with using a NFA item in self-defense. It might get a little funky. The gun's just, getting taken no matter what for a while. So yeah. you you can get that gun back. You will. I think. You but, will, but it'll be gone no matter what they're taking. Yeah, they're gonna take but it, if something were to happen, something. it's like, and you get like a judge that sucks or like a anti gun cop because there are some out there. I think it would be worth even losing the suppressor though if it saved your life. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they're gonna be like, you were expect because you hear these cases all the time and it's state by state. I think we're okay in Kansas, but they could have the argument that like, well, why would you have a suppressor on a gun next to your bedside? You're kind of anticipating doing harm to somebody. Like you're already thinking this out. Cause I've heard cases like that where Yeah. And it's it's like, because hmm, it is an NFA item, which makes it a lot more strict on stuff. But it's like, which is that's just stupid. already absurd. Because and it's it, like, I literally have it to protect my hearing. That's yeah. it. I'm not trying to be James Bond and being quiet, not <laughs> yeah. not getting. I have it to protect my hearing. Yeah, and, and if, it would be like using an SBR. Yeah, it would be questionable, but it makes more sense to clear a house with an SBR, <laughs> like yeah. a ten and a half inch rifle with a real stock than. That's what they use to clear houses. You know, twenty-eight inch barrel, and you're hitting every wall. Yeah, <laughs> I would just hate getting a judge that's like, you, like preempted, like you were going to use this for self defense to to hurt somebody, <clears throat> and then you did. That can get really, yeah. that could go downhill real quick. Yeah, so, I, I would say six six or seven months ago, I got my concealed carry, and there's a lot I'd never thought of mm-hmm. until that course. I would recommend anybody get their concealed carry just for. There was a lot. It was an eight-hour class, and probably seven hours of it I, I knew most of. But the little bit I did learn, it changed my entire theory on. I I never want to pull the trigger if I don't have to. I, I it's great that people stop mass shootings. I would never be that guy. Yeah, I would protect who I'm with and who I care about. I would use my gun to get me out safely. But it's it's scary because if the person turns as you're shooting them, they're sh- they could go from shooting at you to they realize you're shooting at them and they turn. And you hit them in the back. If the if the corner can prove that shot in their back killed them, now it's murder and not self defense. Yeah, 
it's like what what that could happen in 0.3 of a second but they're yeah. gonna look if there's cameras which there's cameras i mean when are you gonna be in a mall or right. a sporting yeah. event and there's not a camera on you and they're gonna analyze it by you know fractions of a second but my mind doesn't process that fact it's in my my mind is always i always watch the shooting like the police shooting videos it's shoot to stop the threat not yeah. shoot until they start to turn to reload or something you know what i mean like but I don't want to go to jail because I defended myself. Mm-hmm. And it depends on the state. And yeah, I, Kansas, I think we're, we probably have it better than most. Be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Colleen Noir had a video a while ago where he broke it down and it was an altercation between a guy and like, like his ex's baby daddy or something like that. So he broke it down to where like, he's like, all right, if we we're going to start with this clip, and I'm, I'm going to look at it as a lawyer looking at just this clip. And then we're going to go back and see the whole story, the, all the, all the footage, it changes. Cause it's like, when you, when you focus on just the clip of him using the gun to shoot this guy, okay. He acted in self-defense, but then if you go back and see the whole situation, it's like, okay, that guy actually committed a crime because he invoked the situation. He ha- could have gone away, but. It he was actually, exactly the Kyle Rittenhouse situation too. Yeah. They they looked at that by fractions of a second, but then when you look at like, oh, this guy was about to hit him in the head with a skateboard, or this guy had a gun flagging his face. head, yeah. like, yeah, then then it is a justified shoot. Mm-hmm. Like it 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 totally changes if you're looking at just this small still image, or you know, one second clip or thirty seconds, totally changes it. And. I would, I've never hoped to be in that position, but I know your adrenaline's got to be going like crazy. And it's like trying to make that split second decision on, do I use it or not? Cause it's like, if you have a guy charging at you with a knife, it, it like, he'll be like 20 feet away, but it takes him no time to yeah, get to you. Twenty-one foot rule. And so you have such a small window to decide, do I shoot or not? Yeah. So, and it, I, I hope I know I'm never in that situation. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would use my gun. To stop lethal force if it was threatening my life directly. Yeah. It just, it, the class changed my mind on would I use my gun to stop lethal force to save someone else's life? And as much as I'd like to be a hero and be that guy, it's so questionable. I mean, if your shot is off and you hit someone else, you're liable for every bullet that leaves oh, yeah. your gun. Yep. So I, I don't, I don't want to end up in prison for 20 years and never see my wife again because I tried to save people at the mall. Like it's what, well, and, what people don't think about is, yeah, that guy stopped that mass shooting, but he also had to shoot 10 rounds from a distance. Is like, had one of those gone off and say, missed the shooter and somehow hit somebody behind the shooter in the background, then he could have been charged with murder Yeah, for killing that person. That and that's got also hit why by... your choice of ammunition matters a lot, too. Yeah. Like, defense rounds are made to just hit that person. If you're shooting ball ammo, you're going to hit what's ever behind the person, too. Yep. Dude, with my job, I've seen a lot of drive-by shooting claims. I had, and it's it's crazy because literally, the and the people that are doing the drive-bys are obviously using ball ammo. Yeah, <laughs> you oh, can definitely sure, tell. Yeah. But the amount of walls that a bullet travels through, they're shooting from that street outside. It literally goes through the entire house. I had one where they lit up the whole side of the house. It was on a corner in, in the ghetto, but they lit up this side of the house. And... It starts out as a small hole through the uh, exterior of the siding, and then as it goes through each wall, it just, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's and like a lot of them just went straight through. It's like it's surprising nobody got killed because it's just going through everything, and it'll like go up upstairs and went. Some of them went out the entire other side well, of the yeah, house. Yeah, if you think about being in that room, if it came through at a seven inch hole, there's seven inches of stuff like a shotgun traveling through that room that then goes through the next wall and it's 12 inches or mm-hmm. yeah, it was, that's probably the worst <laughs> drive by thing I saw. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. That'd be scary. Cause like, you're safe nowhere at that point. Yeah. Cause I yeah. mean, there were bullet holes in the baseboard of the second floor closet that were coming out and then hit a window and stuff. It's like, I've had the opportunity to shoot a lot of cool stuff too, out on like farmland, like cars and different things. It's amazing. What, what even a 22 will go through. And it's not like the movies like you don't use your car door to stop bullets or you don't use a (laughs) even a commercial steel door it's it's going through that it's as much as i like yellowstone that scene at the end of season three where casey 
flips his desk and gets behind that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, that's not going to protect you no. at all. Every bullet's going through that freaking yeah. desk. Like, come on. At least he yeah. had body armor on. It'll help a little bit. <laughs> One ironic yeah. thing, too, talking about bullet penetration. So how in the 1808 deal, how you guys were talking about how the M1 Garand isn't, it's exempt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They just, uh, Garand, or Grand Thumb, he did a video on the this Russian ballistic shield, and it's like, it's legendary, apparently, like, they're saying it could stop the equivalent of one of their like turret guns. I forget the name of it, but it's bigger than a 50 cal. And they claim that they would stop that. And when they got to the M1 Grand, it went right through this thing. <laughs> it, it was, and it, it stopped level. It was level four certified. Every round that would penetrate level four body armor stopped except for the M1 Grand. Because that was the first thing that penetrated it. So what we've learned mm. is everybody go out and buy an M1 Grand, yeah, <laughs> or an and, M1 Carbine. With your CNR deal, you can get them on your CNR if it's an original. Mm -hmm. You can ship right to your door. The only problem <laughs> is they've gone up in price. Oh, they Classic did. Firearms had them for minimum of fourteen hundred. Yeah, that's the cheapest I've seen one is for. I've, I would love to have one in my collection, but it's a tough fourteen hundred dollars spend for me. Yeah. I <laughs> had one that I was selling for a buddy, kind of the Tom situation. Uh, somebody passed away; they they had to get rid of the collection in it. I had like 50 guns, 75% of them were would CNR, old military yeah. style guns. I think I saw that collection, part of it. One was a Garand and one Garand, and another one is a Carbine and one Carbine. I didn't have the money at the time to buy them for myself, but I wish I would have. Yeah. Because I sold them to my cousin and his buddy down in Texas for like 800 bucks. Oh, man. I'm like, dude, you guys now, got it. And this was, this was before. <laughs> that's, but that's what they were worth at the time. Yeah. Or probably a good deal, but yeah, it was a good within a couple hundred bucks. It was still a good worth. deal, but yeah, now it's like shit, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> everything. Knew the Every, everything did that. So I, I would have looked into buying one through before I got my FFL, the CMP program, but it's like uh, you still, it's still not like most of it. Like some of it's still original, but not all of it. It's like pizza. Yeah, like I don't know. I I. Buying those military surpluses, it's like, man, it's difficult because it's like I'd rather see what I'm going to get and know the condition. Yeah. Because I've gotten some from Classic and other places where you get it and you're like, shit. I think it'd be worth <laughs> paying the extra for like the select best out of yeah. however many. But even then, it's still a gamble. They could still draw, you know, five or ten not so great guns and you're getting the best of those guns of a bunch of scratched up yeah. guns. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a gamble. Yep. It's kind of like mystery box unboxing. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. Or the guy that goes to the pawn shop, I'll trade you this for that. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the box is like, no, we'll I'm never do that. steal a little bit more of this whiskey. It's yeah. really good. It, it, the, um, on ice, that kind of 90 proof thing goes away. Yeah. The bite after, yeah. The yeah. after bite. Yeah. It's, it, once a little water is mixed into it, it's totally different. It's still good though. Smooth. Yeah. So they had that, they had the double barrel, and there's another one that Woodford has. I can't remember what it was. I don't know. Is it select? It might be. I, th I know what you're talking. I've seen it at the store. But yeah, my whiskey collection has grown. <laughs> yeah, especially you have an last, impressive collection. Especially the last couple of days, I've been finding I'm, some rare stuff. Yeah, finally texted found, me. <laughs> yeah, finally found Buffalo Trace today, which isn't rare, but for some reason it is right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's hard to find. I don't understand why. Yeah, you used to see it all the time. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think there's just a craze and more people whiskey hunting. Yeah, I don't more know. people getting into whiskey and all that stuff and supply and demand. I mean, it takes the whiskey long time to sit in those barrels before they're ready so yeah yeah but how many freaking storehouses do they got of them a how lot many, <laughs> yeah but how many people you got wanting it that's true you see some of these crazy uh whiskey collections that, that you send me on youtube oh yeah if you look at them i mean they have multiple bottles of the same thing so yeah. except like, for the ones that are like 70 eighty thousand dollars well yeah he only has one of those <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then he also has like oh i have a one of one it's like how yeah how do you get this I need to be on your level. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. Have you, have you, Jacob, seen that um, YouTube channel, The Collector? Uh -huh. He's kind of relatively new to YouTube. This, look it up. Uh, he has a John Wick safe. Like he's got a, his, his first video that came out is like the million dollar gun collection. Yeah. 
It's like four rooms of guns. Dude, oh, just wow. me as a FFL and, and gun owner too, it's like looking at all this stuff and he generally has a suppressor for each gun. It's like the amount of paperwork that he has. I'm like, Jesus, yeah. man. Like well, that and he has his own gun range inside his basement. Oh, that's awesome. Like he has a the the John Wick safe that was in the movie with the bottle of gold Blanton's in there and the couch and everything like it's you'll have to check it out the stuff he and he just came out with a video today on his two point some million dollar um, acreage that he bought and he has like a mile long range on it oh wow it's like <laughs> there's a there's a range what the hell like does that. he do I need to do what yeah. he does there's a mile long range uh, about well from me it's 45 it's closer to you from you it's out in Ottawa like it's about 45 minutes from my house and a buddy wants to join it he has a he bought a semi-auto barrett um and he wants to go shoot out there because it's a mile long range and it's only like 120 bucks or something to join the club to be able to shoot out there i'd like to buy a 6.5 creedmoor and take it out there because i've heard those are like the ultimate beginner round like you can shoot a thousand yards it, like i've seen people the first time they ever shot a bolt action and they hit 800 yard shots and it's like i've, I've been hard pressed to hit 400 yard shots on most of my guns that are made for long range so Chris has that would one. be really yep. cool. A 6.5? <laughs> yeah, I built it. AR-10. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So semi-auto. So yeah, that thing will reach and semi Yeah, that's and then cool. I... Wilson Combat Barrel. Yeah. Oh, I wow. talked him into it. <laughs> I had to talk him into it. Yeah, yeah. that's a cool gun. Yeah. I'm like, you're going to do it. You Stage want to shoot long two distance, trigger. dude. Go with the Wilson Combat Barrel. Yeah. yeah. And then I bought a Vortex Diamondback uh, tactical uh, optics for it. For yeah, you can't plane. go wrong with Vortex. They make well, really also, cool I get, stuff. I get a... like. 40 to 50 percent discount on vortex oh nice so military oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i was like okay i can do this this ain't gonna be too bad yeah <laughs> yeah i and i have the uh, mossberg patriot and 65 creed more just a bolt action it was like 400 bucks but it is dude i love that thing i i saw that right after you bought it i bought a gun from you and was doing a transfer and you're like check check oh, out what i, I yeah. got this week yeah <laughs> but it's hard to find that ammo and if yeah. you do it's freaking expensive like yeah. It is well over a dollar around. Yeah. yeah, I've heard it's definitely one of the ones worth if you get into reloading, reload six point five, especially because yeah. most people shoot long range with it and you yep. can get better better loads. And luckily now the uh, reloading market, you can start finding more stuff now. Yeah, because I could find some of the stuff for reloading because I thought about it and I was like, oh god, just finding the ammo took forever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then one like store one those... fifty bucks for a box, the other one's twenty seven. It's like, which one's good? Yeah. Do you own any suppressors? I do not. You need to. I yeah. I'd like to do an <laughs> SBR too. I'd like to make my pistol actually put a real stock on it. You mean those <clears throat> pistol braces that are a bump stock? Yeah, yeah. You, I sent <laughs> Keith a video this week of it, was it Congress arguing over the fact that a pistol brace they they were trying to say it made a gun function full auto mm -hmm. because it has a buffer tube. And they're like a, a pistol brace combined with a buffer tube results in full auto no that's just what makes the bolt work <laughs> yeah Idiots. you can you can fire it's actually the most legal to shoot a ar pistol with no brace and just a buffered tube because you can't get rid of that no that's like an internal part that ha makes the gun work yeah but that's what makes it semi-auto so that's probably their problem they don't true <sighs> these idiots idiots <laughs> it, it. it's comical watching them try to talk about Guns. Yeah. <laughs> In general. Internal parts. Yeah. <laughs> this might be a good segue into our main topic. Yeah. So main topic for this week, kind of going off of last week, which is 1808, that HR bill, uh, is being banned by social media. It's happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people that post gun stuff. And it's not just one platform. Like it's, it's almost all of them. Anymore. All of them. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I have an email i got an email the other day just out of nowhere it said that it, it got sent to my personal address because it was it had my personal facebook page on there and said your account has been restricted from ads and uh what else did it say like do it do it like i can't do anything with ads on it and it, it didn't but have, it blocked just your personal account entirely didn't it yeah yeah i'm like Okay, so I have the Boomstick Tactical Facebook page that I run through that account, but that's a whole separate thing. But just because it's attached to your personal account. It didn't even say why. It just said you are no, like, it didn't give me a reason. 
Because sometimes they'll say, oh, it doesn't meet our community guidelines. It should tell you exactly what post and how you violated it so you cannot recreate the violation. Yeah, just no. I got no reasoning at all. <laughs> yeah. So because I know because it and it sucks because when I post something and it, it doesn't have to be like an ad related anything I post on the Facebook page because it's for Boomstick. It's a business page. It's always like, oh, pay $10 and get this boosted post yeah. to reach an X amount of people. And every time it pisses me off that it gives me that option because every time I do it, it says not eligible. This goes against our community guidelines. And then some, half the time it ends up banning me from Facebook. Like they're like trying to give them money. Yeah. They're like, you're banned from Facebook because this goes against our guidelines. So you can't do anything for X amount of days. I'm like, are you fucking serious? You just gave me the option. Like, I was just doing what you told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have friends that own, like, uh, a buddy that owns a, a performance car shop, and he does that all the time, and it really helps the, like, it, the ads go way oh, further. I'm, I'm sure. And I try. And yeah. even with, same thing with Instagram, I'll do a post, and I don't I don't try and sell anything on it. Like, if you go to my website on the, like, boomsicktactical.com or whatever, I can't, I'm, Maybe I won't say it because their AI will pick it up, but <laughs> I have a website for my gun business, but you cannot directly buy a gun from me online. I have yeah. it set up to where you go through arms list and then you have to contact me and we do it that way. I don't know if it's because I have a gun website, even though if you go to it, I'm sure the people behind the scenes of the AI, AI doesn't realize that I don't actually sell guns on that site. I don't know, but whatever it is, I they they don't like in. that you advertise it at yeah. all. And probably. I try, like YouTube has a certain guidelines and it gets stricter and stricter, but I stick within those guidelines and they still don't let me monetize. They'll let me monetize the podcast, but um, anything that has to do with gun, whether it's a how to clean it or how like a com gun comparison or just anything, if you mention gun or like anything, it's, demonetizes it but if you go to their community guidelines it's like it still fits within that because i'm not selling it i'm not doing a post i don't have any links say hey go buy yeah, this it's a comparison video this usually. is how you do it no still and it says their excuse that they come up with is that it's not suitable for their ad sellers but see i think that they're biased in the sense of like Demolition Ranch is the biggest gun YouTube channel. YouTube channel. <laughs> right. And he doesn't get flagged when he shows him showing whatever gun will shoot through however many cans of mayonnaise this week. Or, <laughs> or you right. know, I have a, a, about a $2,000 copper ball. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, they had a, they, he'll collaborate with people too. Like they shot a nitrous uh, tank off of, uh, oh, I can't think of the guy's name, Cletus McFarland. He has a, yeah. a big car channel. And so they, sh but they never demonetize him. Well, I think they do. They might demonetize him, but they don't block his video or restrict his video yeah. because he has such a big following. So it, it's, but your right. comparison video that doesn't even show you firing a weapon. It's absurd that that gets taken down. Yeah. Mine are more educational versus I'm not showing you how to destroy something or what your gun can do. Like and, he and they is. say education videos are allowed, which to me also building an AR 15 would be an educational, educational. video. Yep. That is, I looked at their community guidelines before um, we did this earlier today. And it says you cannot in any way show a video that shows how to assemble. And it was strict in an AR-15. Like, it, like you cannot show how to assemble a lower receiver, which is how I learned how. Yeah, because back <laughs> in 2014, you were able to do that. And it's educational, totally legal. Like, you had to be legal. You had to purchase that lower legally. We were just showing you how to do it. And you can't do that anymore. Yeah. It sucks because there's... Like people then try to do it themselves or try to figure it out and probably going to mess up and hurt themselves or somebody or whatever. It's like, let us get the information out there to, help to people. educate people and things will be better versus trying to just ban us in general and not yeah. getting the correct information out there. So it's whatever, like, so they ban the gun community from posting anything and getting, you know, educational information out there. Then all that's out there is the anti-gunners information, and they're just scaring people Boy. away, making it look like guns are super bad, and that's how we get into this predicament. Like, yeah, yeah. I, th I think I told you when that first happened. A couple of the main channels on YouTube that showed how to build an AR-15, they were they're banned entirely. Like their their channel was taken away from them. Yeah. 
they moved to Pornhub because Pornhub didn't have the community guidelines <laughs> that YouTube did, and they could show you just how to build an AR-15, which not related to Pornhub at all. But hey, <laughs> if it's getting views, yeah, whatever. Well, and at least it keeps the information out there because it, yeah. it's useful information. Yeah. Now I do. I'm I'm a realistic when it comes like comes to these laws. Like I think eighty percent lowers aren't a great thing, personally. Like I, as me or you doing it as legal gun owners, and we're not going to do anything to violate a law because we don't want to get in trouble. I, I get it, but knowing that anybody, a criminal, a terrorist, uh, someone that's not a U.S. citizen, can come over here and have an eighty percent lower shipped to their door, follow a YouTube video, and make an AR-15. As yeah. a completely unregistered gun, okay, I'm okay with giving up that. Right. Are you okay with having ending private sales? No. I I get it, but I I wouldn't. That... I I enjoy the way it is right now. It it only because they're attacking our gun rights so hard. I have so many guns that won't come back to me because. A friend bought them seven years ago and decided they didn't want it or didn't like it or want to move on to a different gun that's not in my name. And I know no one's going to come knock on my door because I bought that gun because and I legally bought it. I keep bill of sale and everything like I'm supposed to with names and everything, even if it's a friend usually. So I can prove where I got the gun and do everything the way I'm supposed to. But if they're going to start showing up for straw purchases, I, I, I would rather buy a gun from a friend. Yeah. than that with with where we're at it's scary that the atf is coming after people so playing devil's advocate here like <laughs> i you know where i stand and everything but i want it's kind of fun to play devil's advocate <laughs> so you said you're okay with getting rid of 80 percent lowers so it doesn't go to criminals Correct. or terrorist stuff I know like where that you're going with this already. <laughs> yep <laughs> so what's to stop them from buying one in a private sale like you yeah, you're more than likely going to sell to somebody that you know that way. But I would you. be okay. I would be all for having to do a legal transfer. I'd be happy to pay you twenty five dollars to put every gun into my name. That that's super reasonable. Re-register it, run a background check, and put it in my name. As long as I know that they're not taking pictures to create a registration to come after my gun. Oh, there's a registration there. Yeah. See that that's what's messed up to me yeah. is. Uh, they say there's not, but after a lot of the stuff we've seen, if you if they're you, making win, I would urge anyone that wants a gun registration to seriously look into the history of Hitler. He he won popular vote by ninety eight percent and told people to make them safe. They were going to start a gun registration and they weren't going to take the guns. <laughs> and quickly they took every gun off of that registration because you told them, "Hey, here's the five guns I own, the serial numbers to them." address yeah <laughs> where they're stored I, pretty much so when nancy pelosi wins a vote in in senate then all of a sudden now they know hey if you don't come up with this gun you're going to jail like even if i legitimate let's say i sold it legally in kansas private sale before they changed the law they could say hey you registered it and we know you had it if you don't have it now you're a felon yeah and now you can't own any gun and that's the thing too is if you violate any of these laws if you mm -hmm. violate one law on one gun they take all of your guns because you're a felon. Mm -hmm. And then you can never own one again. Yeah. Legally. Or be in possession or like even shoot one. Like you're as a felon, you can't touch well, a gun. Actually, yeah. you can do muzzle loaders. That's not against the law. You can do muzzle loaders. So I have a theory <laughs> that the answer to our, if things were to go so far south that we lost all these guns, that gunpowder fired ammunition if we just go away from that i don't know if you've seen what they've done done with air rifles but they have air not bb guns air rifles that are up to 50 caliber and they're projected by air not gunpowder there is no law restricting that because the definition of a firearm is that it's a gunpowder fired rifle so why couldn't we come up with another ignition system even if it's not air it would skirt the law but they would have to rewrite all the laws to meet a new system if, if they go away from that i mean yeah. we're talking about gu i mean gun technology hasn't changed much in hundreds of years yeah. like maybe how the gun cycles but we're still trying to figure out how to make this bullet function through a weapon what if we just 
get rid of the bullet, then yeah, we're skirting the law again, but it, it starts all over. Yep. Enough pressure, enough water, you can cut people in half. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a will, there's a way. There's that infamous and, water fired bullet too, that they say yep. that the CIA had. Mm-hmm. So do you think the fact that any social media platform is so anti-gun has to do with political influence? 100%. Oh, yeah. Like, do you think, like, because it, it all, shows you who owns those companies, too, yeah. where they lie. Because we're, obviously, Cause freedom of speech is technically out the window. We supposedly have the First Amendment, but the fact that you, we can't talk about certain things on social media, like if you... You know, a lot of stuff can get taken down just at the discretion of somebody working for one of those yeah. I mean, companies. You can talk about gender and all that stuff on there, but you can't talk about guns, which right. is actually an amendment. And people get like, I would hate to be a teenager now going through middle school and high school with social media. Like, oh, yeah, I got bullied enough without that. I can't imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so social bullying, cyber bullying is OK. But talking about trying to educate people on guns, you can't. Well, it's it's completely politically biased. Yeah, on who owns the company, but they're private companies, and you can't say that a company can't disallow this or disallow that. But someone from the right needs to like Elon Musk buying Twitter. I thought would have been great. Like, yeah, because it would have freed up at least one platform for us to not have to worry about. Who do you think of Trump's? We should make our platform. own platform. Well, Trump made one, yeah. uh, True Social or whatever. Yeah, but they get they get so taken over, like it, everything is so yeah. big that it just doesn't take off. Yeah, there's, there's got to be a way. <laughs> it's like because it's not just like if it was just Facebook, then okay. But it's literally well, everything's powered by Meta anymore, and they're they all buy related. everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's you really just got to come up a way to overcome that. So that's that's. I don't know if you know, but on the Facebook on the guidelines of what they're allowed to do. Like when you get flagged, they can go through you. Like they have a person who will go through your private messages and read every private message between someone. So let's say that like, like there's ways that skirt the law on Facebook where you'll see like a gun case for sale on marketplace. And then it, it you private message them and they'll tell you also included is this gun. Well, if they, if you flag that person, they would read those messages and then, delete their account or ban them like you get. So there's no way around it. They're, they're so in, and eventually that'll be a bot that does that. Yeah. It'll be all AI yeah. before too long taken over. They're not far from that. Edwards, <laughs> like Edward Snowden called all this stuff. Like, yeah. and of course now he can't come back to the United States because <laughs> they have all places he's stuck in Russia. Like, yeah. That would suck. That he's one like, of the like most patriotic <laughs> Americans to do it, something for us. And, and I don't know how much I've only seen the movie and I don't know how much of the movie's true. Cause you know, it's Hollywood, but it's like, man, if the government's really doing that. Oh, I listen. I listened so to a, a podcast by Dan Cummins called time suck. And I listened to two and a half hours on Edward Snowden. It's insane how he progressed and what he believed. And then once he saw what he saw, how he changed and, it was because of his oath to the constitution was the reason he felt obligated to come out about it. And he even told reporters like, you need to be really careful of how you put this information out. And he goes, I don't want you to not, he goes, I don't want you to think about me at all. He goes, if you have to demonize me, absolutely do it. He goes, feel, do whatever you feel is right. And he goes, and don't protect me along the way. He goes, I'm doing this to protect the constitution, not the government or myself. He goes, I don't want to be a pre- preserved as an informant or anything he goes because that's gonna it'll it'll make it look less validated mm-hmm. you know what i mean but now members even of like congress and everything want to change the constitution yeah because they're like oh what applied back then doesn't apply now but that they, they actually wrote it because of now yeah. exactly so it didn't repeat itself yep. and they don't re- they I think, I think the they government is it. picking up on it on that like well they're on the wrong side of it yeah. it's in case they ever do anything wrong so we, we have that ability protection. so yeah if i was on that side of it i would be like no yep. i definitely don't want you guys to have the power to kill us if we take this too far cuz we're trying to take this as far as we can yeah i mean how many americans are there and how many guns are <laughs> yeah oh and that's yeah. registered guns yeah. there's there's more registered guns than there are yeah. citizens yep 
And I don't, when everybody says I want to put this gun in my name or have it registered, realistically, I know this is changing and up for debate, but realistically, there's no gun registry with the federal government, and there shouldn't be. So as of right now, for the most part, there isn't. Obviously, we think we have seen things with the ATF to where it may seem like it's going away from that, or they're trying to find ways to work around that. But as of right now, there's no gun registry. So official, right? Exactly. So it's like when when people say I want to get this gun in my name or register to my name, it's not you're not registering it. What I'm doing is just making sure you're legally okay to own this gun. Yeah. Um. Once you fill out that paperwork and give it to me, because I don't do anything electronic, I think. From what I've seen, I'm going to stay away from the electronic forums. <laughs> uh, it goes into a filing cabinet or my safe, and it stays there. Unless you shut down your FFL. Mm -hmm. Then it goes then to them. it has to go to the ATF, right? Yep. Or something would happen. Which so many of those businesses have done that. Yep. So what would happen if, like, let's say you tomorrow decide I don't want to do this anymore, and your house catches fire and all those documents, <laughs> like, what... What, what if we went out on do? my boat with all of your records and they happen to fall over? Honestly, that I don't know. Like, because because I'm sure something like that could happen. They're like, oh, it never happened, but it, there's a possibility of it. There was a a big fire that destroyed a bunch of the uh, papers like that somewhere. I forgot where it was, or the floor broke through, or something happened. Uh, I don't know. That's that's a good question. Because yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I have them here. The most recent ones are in a filing cabinet. The rest I put in a safe. But yeah, what were what would happen if that or let's say someone breaks into your house and steals your safe with everything in it? Yeah, you deserved yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how nobody's gonna not notice that that live around me, but yeah. and the fact that if you can actually wheel well, that out. I imagine you would have to report that immediately. Well, yeah, I I would, but I don't think I'd get in trouble because I mean, well, you, we, can't, we, you can't be we liable for an accident. Yeah. Right. But. Or theft. <laughs> and or luckily nature. so far the, the yeah. ATF people here at Kansas city from what I've dealt with, they're cool. Uh, I don't know where that lady that was taking pictures of his logbook, where that, what state that was located in, but yeah. you have, it all depends on your field office too. I mean, obviously you have a lot of ATF agents that are anti-gun, but then you got some that are, Pro gun and like okay, like the guy that did my thing was super cool. The guy that interviewed me when I got my first license was the other one locally, and he was super cool. He's like, Oh, you know, you want to be a home based FFL? Cool. Uh, we rely on you guys just to make sure guns are sold legally and not going to the wrong hands. Um, if they're using a crime, yeah, you know, it's understandable for them to tr do a trace, but but when people are like, I want to put them in my name, it's not really going in your name if there's ever if that gun ever is used in a crime, then it's going to just trace it back to whoever had it last or registered it in their name, which in my opinion, you should be liable to keep a record of yeah. who you sell your gun to or don't. But, and that's where the private sale comes <clears throat> in. So, because, so you could have a bill of sale, but you as a private individual, I mean, that guy could be lying out of his ass. Like he yeah. could have like a fake ID or, yeah. so you have as an FFL, I have a way cause I'm going through an actual system. You as a private individual may not be selling it to who you actually think are selling it to. Let me get your opinion on this. And that's just me just being <laughs> devil's advocate there. But yeah, well, so we have a laborer we've been using at work um, who is a felon. And he has a friend who owns an FFL in Kansas. He committed his felony in Arizona. He lived in Arizona most of his life, and he's lived here the last six or seven years. Okay. So just out of curiosity, his buddy goes, hey, let me run you through the system. I'm not going to sell you a gun. I know you're a felon. You can't, did you, can't, not, you can't just do that. He did. You can't. <laughs> well, he did. He did. He, he, he put it through like he was trying to purchase a weapon, and the he was approved with a felony. He was approved. He did not go through with the purchase of the weapon doesn't own a gun but he was approved through kansas background check with a felony hmm. i was super shocked how long had he had that felony because i know after so long they get it's could old, get. it is an older crime but it's not been taken off of like he would he could pay i think to get it expunged, expunged but he hasn't 
You Done think it was that. longer than 10 years ago? I think it was, yeah. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Like the maybe, but they, maybe it, they didn't it, care. Is he still like a registered felon though? He is. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. I, I wonder how that works. I don't know. Because that should now be. it's not his felony is for traffic crimes. It's not violent crimes. It doesn't didn't relate to a gun. So I, that could also make them look at it like maybe it it wasn't related at all. I assumed it was for no. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're a registered felon, yeah, yeah. It, he was doing like a super high speed. He should and, talk to an attorney about that. Just and then be like, hey, maybe he, yeah. He has a plan to get it expunged, but he doesn't have the money for it. But he's at the point where he can. Which like shit. Then at that point, if it passes the back well i guess it depends because on the form even though hunter biden lied on the form the rest of us would get in trouble for lying on the form uh there's yeah and i wonder now that you say that i wonder if he lied on the form or if he was honest on the form because you'd have to say if you're a felon or not yeah on the form you do but when i as an ffl when i run the background track it doesn't ask me any, any of those questions all i put is your your name your date of birth weight height um yeah, you're, whether you're a citizen so it wouldn't affect yes what it runs so i don't else. anything that you mark yes or no to doesn't go in the background check it just checks your like social your driver's license number stuff like that anything uh, that's we're crazy. asking i never you, realized that so but that's interesting that he's still passed though yeah i was i was and he was like i didn't he's like i didn't buy a gun like made it very clear he's like but i passed the background check that's, to that's buy weird. guns yeah yeah because there's some I mean, I haven't had that option like that come across where somebody marks yes on some of those. So I don't know. Cause, <laughs> cause legally, if you say, Hey, I'm not a felon, but you are, and you lie on that form, you get in trouble. You get in trouble. Cause it's days you're going to face a penalty. But what if you said I have a felony and they were like, you can buy a gun. There's like a, <laughs> if, if you hit yes to some of those, there's like extra things that you got to yeah go to at that point. That's yeah, I, I, that's weird. I'm flabbergasted <laughs> at that. I don't, I and don't know. I've known this guy six months. I mean, he could be pulling my leg. I don't know for sure. Yeah. So I, but can't, I can't say for certainty. Like I was there and saw this happen. You're not supposed to just do random background checks using that system, though. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Well, because if because I had employed, they do a background check on you, and a lot of that's places. not through the same system, though. It's weird, though. The Nick's Easy Check is specifically for gun sales. Yeah. Um, because if, if I, I learned the hard way, I had somebody that would like at a gun show, was an employee of the place that went somewhere, he got delayed. And so he came to me and was like, Hey, I just want to see if it'll get approved. So he filled out a form, but he got delayed. He's like, I don't want to buy anything. So I threw away that form. Cause I'm like, ah, I'm not, he doesn't want to buy anything anyway. Well, when it came up to my inspection, uh, it happens like every four years five years or whatever, they go through the last, you know, hundred say years worth of forms, which mine was like a hundred. Uh, they had a record of every denial that I've ever had. Like that went through like the background check. And if it's comes back as a denied, they had a record of that. And they asked for that form. I'm like, well, that guy didn't end up purchasing it. He just, so i you know, got rid of the form. It's like, you're not supposed to do that. Like anything that, anything that gets denied, especially you have to keep a that record form. of that. Yeah. That makes sense. So the fact that I would be really worried <laughs> about doing a background check outside of not having a form to go with it. Cause if it he does a, get I mean, denied, he filled out a form. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. he did it. Like he was trying, he came up with a gun. Like he had a gun, he took a gun and he filled out the form for a gun. At, I think the guy owns a pawn shop or something. And so did he mark yes in the felony section? Of I don't that? know. I'll ask. That's crazy. I'd be curious to know. I didn't think about asking that because I didn't. You know, he just was telling me a story about it. Yeah, because he, he passed. Yeah, because those things that were asked you, if you denounced your citizenship, do you have a felony, all that stuff is not part of the background check. Yeah. Which you would it think should be. it should be in your background check. So I'm not. Yeah, that's, that's weird. <laughs> weird. Yeah. And let's, because I know some people have like, they have a initial only for the middle name, but then sometimes they'll use a full name. So yeah. that might, and maybe he didn't put in a social security number in the background check, because that's optional. You don't have to put in a social on the background check. It helps, especially yeah. if you have a common name, but. Well, I, I bought a, a GSG 22 that I've already sold. 
but like a, it was a replica MP5. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, I, I wanted to buy it at a gun show, and it was a really good deal. I knew I knew the price of it, knew what I was looking for, and it was under the price that I was willing to pay. So it's like, hey, I'll take it. And it was in Kansas City, Missouri, and I failed the background check for some reason. Got denied. I went to Quick's Guns the same afternoon. They had one, matched the price, and I walked home with it passing the background check three hours later. <laughs> so that baffled me. Did yeah. you give them your social? Both of them. Both of them. But one was in Missouri and one was in Kansas. I'm a Kansas resident. That's why. But, but it's, it's a, rifle. a rifle. It's not a handgun. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Handgun, I'm not allowed to buy in Missouri. Yeah. Right. I, I know all this, but yeah. I like the Kansas City, Missouri gun shows. They're bigger. They have yeah. more vendors. Yes. I, I wish you could go there. I wish I could. All I need is a Missouri permanent address. So if you know anybody that lives in Missouri. <laughs> we used to. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I would love to go there. And it sucks because it's literally just across the state line. Yeah. Oh, it's super close for us. Yeah, we're 15 minutes. It's I'm a lot closer. From... It's Well, it's a little bit closer yeah. than going to freaking Topeka. I hate yeah. going to Topeka. Overland Park hasn't had one this year and isn't Which going sucks. to. sucks. Yeah. That's weird because they did the boat show. I don't know why they're not doing gun shows. Yeah. Because it's guns and guns are bad. More populated area. So it's like, I, w- I wonder with the, because obviously, you know, you used to be able to do gun tutorial videos. Now you can't. Um, I get that you cannot with YouTube. If you're doing a live stream, you can't handle the gun. Okay, I get that. Uh, but the fact that you can't literally advertise anything like okay i get that okay you don't want us to advertise for gun sales sure i'm not advertising for gun sales i'm like hey look at this educational video that's what i'm advertising or like this podcast a gun comparison it's it's, that's not selling the gun it's teaching you the differences it's like hey this camera versus that camera what is educational is it gun safety is that it is it like as far as what i do or just what they're i mean what do they consider educational and what not because to me it's educational to learn the comparison between why would I buy this gun or this gun? That, exactly. Like proper handling of a gun, yeah. showing that, hey, it's cleared. I think cycles. That's, you do that at every video, that's, which is like probably the most important thing to do. Mm-hmm. That's so, up to them at that point. Yeah. Because it's, which, yeah. I mean, uh, assembling a gun is educational. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Simple or wrong, <laughs> and you might have a mishap. And yeah. <laughs> YouTube's guidelines, it doesn't say I can't do that but it's still, they won't let me monetize on there because it's unfittable for their ad. Hmm. Well, okay, that's fine, but still... Which sucks because... Don't ban like, me because... Or take the video down because I showed it. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. And is it just going to get worse to where, hey, if you're a it's gun... It's only gotten worse. YouTube channel, like anything to do with guns, is going to go away. And like, Spotify has been pretty open, but then the whole Joe Rogan thing, it's like, okay, are they going to start cracking down on what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, probably. It's like, okay, so then where's our freedom of speech at that point? Because that's the only way to get the word out now is through yeah, some how much sort are we of... Yeah, skirting so, the line right now. Some yeah. sort of... Yeah, it's owned by somebody, and technically, if you own a business, you can, yeah, you know, do whatever. But at some point, it's like you got to get the word out there and be able to tell your story. Just stand out in the middle of the street, start yelling it, I guess. Have microphones do it the old way. <laughs> yeah. This is peaceful. <laughs> 2024 what do you think is going to happen uh sure shit ain't gonna be trump sure shit ain't gonna be joe biden i'm fine honestly trump was great but biden and trump are both at an age where i don't know that they need another four years of presidency regardless of what you think about them yeah. Outside of that, I mean, it, just looking old. at look at Obama. I, I didn't like Obama, but look at Obama. That man aged fifteen years mm-hmm. in his eight. I swear, Biden's like just a zombie right now. Yeah, he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Like, that's scary. Dude. He just yeah, mm-hmm. just this week he he shook a guy's hand, didn't remember he shook his hand, and tried to shake his hand again. Schumer's hand. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like. And someone yelled something at him. He just sat there. Did he really have COVID, or did they just do that as a cover up because he had some other? Something going on with um, his mind to where he couldn't. I hope. Yeah, I wish Some, something's I going they, on there. Yeah, I think that, and I also I wish they just put term limits on Senate, Congress, all of it. We're an age limit. Yeah, like something because. Yeah. Or I think they should lower 
the the minimum age too because we're at a point where you can be very educated and at a very young age yeah and i i don't think so what, 35 you, yeah i think it should be much lower than that i don't Not, know i don't i don't know there should be 18 or anything yeah but <laughs> i think but, 35 is a good age because you know when you're still in like, you're still trying to figure out adulthood like you could have a doctorate before you that. could but yeah. <laughs> you still get i don't know i i'm cool with the 35 just because you're still problem is we're not getting anybody young to run we're not well because <laughs> you have to have money problem. you have yeah. you cannot run to be president unless you have money yeah yep and most of us don't unless we've been no you won't make it through the primaries without yeah. tons and tons of money which sucks because that's the whole point of the thing is yeah. anybody should be able to run you'll never but... have a common person make no. it nope no trump only made it because he was a billionaire to start <laughs> yeah he's the only president to and lose I'm, money i'm not a, I, I trump was great but I don't need Trump to run again. Honestly, if I could choose the next president, it'd be Ted Cruz. The man can cite the Constitution verbatim. He he knows what the country was founded on and believes in that. He'd like, never make it because he's too he's too right. Pro Second yep. Amendment. Yeah. No, like well, it's half the country would vote for him, but then you get half the other. And that's I'm I'm cool with the term limits, but then at some point it's like. God, we we need guys like that in the office to yeah. stay there because okay. If, so let, not even term limits though. I don't think that you should get a salary for the rest of your life. Well, you're not only getting that; you're getting health care for the rest of your life. You're still getting insider trade information. Okay, and and at, before we had public health care, you having government health care different from everybody else is fine. Yeah, but your your health care should match the government or or the the provided health care plan. Yep. Why would you get better health care than what we provide the American people? Yep. You should vote for what you want for everybody, not like you're the CEO and all the other people get shittier health care. Yeah. Crazy thing is, I don't know if you guys have had this, but with Cigna, did you know they have like a doctor on their on like their own doctor? Like and they battle your doctor saying, No, I you you don't need to do that. You need to do this. To lower cost? No, to like well, that or like, like, say you want you have to go and get a biopsy. No, you shouldn't do that first. You need to go run these tests first. I did not know that. Yeah, I have Cigna, and that drives me nuts. Like, what the hell does this insurance company know that my doctor doesn't? Yeah. And then I found out they've got their own doctors. This insurance on staff on just staff. to fight your yeah. doctor. That's it's fucking crazy to yeah. me. <laughs> so well, are they? Is that doctor going through your medical records? I guess that, and they're making recommendations. I was like, what in the world? I, I'm self-employed and I carry Obamacare, but I've had times where like, let's say I need an MRI or an x-ray that it, my doctor literally will tell me if you pay cash, I know a place that is cheaper than running through yep. your insurance. Yeah. How is that possible? What yeah. And I'll pay, I'll pay $75 for what was going to cost. They, they'll tell me 800 on insurance yeah. and your portion's 250. Yeah. Yeah. It's I like, what? I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's like they're making more double the money. It's like they charge you what they would charge you anyways yeah. and insurance yep. a certain amount. So Obamacare, because my mom worked in a diabetes facility and uh, Obamacare screwed everything because it was costing so much money for them and they'd be losing so much money that it just, it's bad for the health. It's bad yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. It, why? I mean, but I can't get, I can't go through the private. It's absurd what they want. Yeah. If I try to go outside of Obamacare, it, it is unreal because I get a tax credit off of my income and I'm pretty good about my write offs. So if I try to go through private, it, it's a unreal. Is like, your, does your wife work? She's also self employed. Ah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. What does she do? She's a nanny. Nice. So if we have kids. <laughs> we're in. I have she wants nannying. to get out of nannying. Ah, but... don't say that. <laughs> I have heard that a lot, though. But she also, it's hard for us to walk away from where she's at. She currently works for a nurse anesthetist, which is a nurse that applies anesthesia, and a surgeon. So they make over a million a year. So they do definitely take care of her. Like we're watching their dog right now while they're out of town, and she's probably making more than most people would just for us watching their dog. Nice. So. Nice. More gun money, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you still have when we were in high school, you had a Trans Am? Had a Camaro. 
And kind of like the NCIS background check, I've been looking for this Camaro. I have ties to... That black one? Yes. So we do all of the maintenance work for... I'm not going to name the department, but a lo- our local de- police department. But I've done all their maintenance for years and years and years. I know the chief. I know the guy in line to be the next chief. I know the previous chief. I know two chiefs ago. <laughs> I've asked all of them. None of them will run the plate or VIN off the car that I had because the FBI then gets flagged. And if the person that owns it and has a warrant, <laughs> the FBI immediately gets notified like they have the car pulled over because you're not supposed to kind of like the background check on guns. Yeah. You're not supposed to run it. The DMV won't help me because of privacy laws. So I the closest I found is this car is sitting somewhere in Gardner, Kansas, but I cannot find it to save my life. And I would pay four times what it's worth to have this car back. <laughs> Why? For sentimental value. Do you get laid in the back seat or something? Or no, several times. <laughs> in fact <laughs> You remember my girlfriend Jocelyn. So we got caught messing around in it once and then we broke up and I was out on a date with another girl and the same cop pulled me over in Johnny Mission Park. <laughs> He's like, you were with a different girl last time. I'm like, thanks for ruining my evening. (laughs) Slap. (laughs) Yeah. But no, they will not help me at all find that car. SS, RS? It was an RS. It was a 305, five-speed. But I I just, I have a lot of memories in that car. I'd love to have it back. Oh, I I kicked myself for selling my SS Camaro. Yeah. Like, (laughs) I traded it in for a truck thinking, oh, this is, you know, just makes sense. I don't have that truck anymore because it was expensive. <laughs> yeah. But then before I graduated, I bought my WS6 Trans Am. That's what it is. And I still have that. I it was you call it what? Black? Black Betty. Black Betty. And, <laughs> yeah. and Black Betty has her own Facebook page. She does. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube yeah. channel? No. No. Just a Facebook TikTok? page. TikTok? <laughs> no. Well, I, I am on TikTok, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh it's been stored inside for the last eight years. And the guy I was renting my storage unit from just recently, like overnight was like, Hey, I bought too many cars and I need your unit back. And so now it is sitting in my front yard for the last two weeks, driving me insane, getting rained on. And I'm looking for a new spot, but we're in such high inflation. Like the best I can find is like triple what I was paying. It's just, it's tough. And my garage is full of mopeds. So where did, (laughs) Joe had his caddy stored in a storage unit somewhere. Like it was just big enough that he could park his big ass Cadillac in. I remember I went and got an actual like, like storage mart. I got the biggest thing they could to store my seven series in there for like three, four months. So I sold it, but it was still like $160 a month. Yeah. See, I was paying 75 for like the last eight years. You can't beat that. I found some stuff that I might, go look at that's out like in Bonner and Tonganoxie, but it also sucks. Like when it's 40 minutes from your house, you're never going to go drive yeah. it. So, yeah, so this one's literally like right. Down why the keep the car? There. Sentimental value. I'm never selling that car. <laughs> How much money have you put in that car? Oh my God. Too much. <laughs> I have not kept receipts in just, just eight years. The off. last time that I checked receipts eight years ago, I had $60,000 not counting the purchase of the car in the car, but that doesn't count. So if I bought a motor and I decided I wanted a different motor, I would sell that motor. It, I did not take into account. I what got what you said. I got all this that. much out of that motor before I spent quadruple on the next motor. So <laughs> I have made money along the way off of it, but I have put way more than it'll ever be worth in it. <laughs> I've had offers to buy it, just driving it around. It's never enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, over over twenty thousand dollars, I might consider it, but it's a car that books for twelve. <laughs> I don't know yeah. with the car yeah. situation now these days. Everything's yeah, Skyrim. Right. I would especially, never list it, especially like in the nineties cars. Like all of a sudden, they're like quadruple what they yeah. were. And this car, I think a, a C5 Corvette, and this is a 2002 WS6 Trans Am, they're pretty timeless in body lines. Yeah. Like the interior, anything in the 90s and 2000s was complete shit from GM. Yep. Like cheap plastic, cheap everything. But it has amazing seats, one of the most comfortable cars I've ever drove. And then I have it set up to be a race car, and I want to take it back to be – I want to put – air conditioning and stuff back in it. It's a nitrous car right now. It makes <laughs> 550 horsepower on full slicks. I mean, it'll put you back in your seat. Like 
you wouldn't believe, but that was a different time in my life. I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I want to take it to weddings and stuff now yeah. and not, Car not be, and be sweating by the time I get there. I don't care about saving 25 pounds of air conditioning <laughs> to be cool. <laughs> I did. I cared more in my twenties, not, not in my thirties. <laughs> it's like, I'm, yeah. Nice. <laughs> you guys in your cars. <laughs> hey, that's what I had before guns. This guy refuses to sell his red BMW. That's what, an 80... 88? 88. 325i. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't get rid of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much ready for any road track. Yeah. See? Mm-hmm. Yep, that, that's what I put my money into before guns, and then I got into guns, and now I have a boat, and my God, there's not a more <laughs> expensive hobby than boating. I found out I could buy a plane cheaper than what I'm paying for my boat. I could pay for a hangar and maintenance on an airplane for less than I have in my boat. And I don't have a crazy boat. I don't have some 100 mile an hour. I have a 45 mile an hour family, you know, open bow boat. Like I've been watching, uh, I don't know if I want to admit this on a podcast, but like we said, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of a certain TV show about yachts. Yeah. and uh, It's a good show. <laughs> apparently... I'm way caught up because I'm on season seven of, of the med one. <laughs> and it like I, last night I was watching it and it stopped and I'm like, okay, what's going to happen now? And then it just nothing. So I'm, I must be caught up and it pisses me <laughs> off because I wanted to see what happened next. I'm caught up on every variation of every season. So yeah, we were like binge watching them and then you get to the point where now you have to wait a week for a new episode to come out. Are you on season seven of below deck med? Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's, so it's, that's current. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, at least they didn't stop but making you, it. If you haven't watched, there's Australia, there's Sailing Yacht, there's. And there's just Below Deck. Below Man, right? Deck, which, I, which has, yeah, that, that's one of the best ones is the is original it? one. Really? Yeah. The, the gray haired captain, I can't think of his name, but. It's like all the pawn shops ones that came out with and then. Yeah. Kept going and going and going and changing. So that, the original one's good. Because like, oh, yeah. what I like about the med is usually there's a returning somebody. They they all the have that. Yeah, and okay. they there's there's a chef Ben that's on like three different. Yeah, he's on, he was on med. He was on med, but he was on the original, and he was also on like I, I forget he's on one of the other ones too. But making that money, not Hannah, because yeah. now she's pregnant and got yeah, she's what she off. wanted. She's <sighs> gone. At first, and I started watching that because I'm like, she's hot. She's blonde, <laughs> has that Australian accent. I love an Australian accent on the show. You would but. like the Australia show. And the, the first season is this uh, Chief Stew that's Australian. But she came from, I think, the original show. And then became a Chief Stew on the first Australian yacht one, which is, they're all really good. I'd like to see the Stanley one just because it's different. It is very different. And... They actually go and race other sailing yachts. It's pretty nice. cool. And like the thing it lists. So like You're way it's it's over. very cool because like <laughs> the captain will be like, I just want to go fast. And like I don't care that it's breakfast time. And then like the chef is trying to cook and the yacht is like all the way tilted <laughs> over and everything's just flying everywhere. If if I would have known that was a thing in my early twenties, oh yeah. Dude, that would have been like they make crazy Fucking money. Awesome. They're they're making twenty five to thirty dollars an hour for their position, and then they get five hundred dollars a day in tips on average. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god, yes. <sighs> if I would have known, I, of course I don't have my sea legs, but I would assume you would get. <laughs> well, on the yachts, they have stabilizers. They don't. Yeah. They right. don't. It's not like being on the fishing boat. You were on the sailing yacht would move, but the yacht yachts. And then the newest, well, you've seen on Med where the air conditioning went out and that thing, everything oh, yeah. was crashing around. That's what yeah, I would have It puked. takes all of that out just by sitting there. I was good on the Carnival Cruise or the or the Bud Light Cruise that we went on to because of I didn't sway too much. There was a yeah. couple times it was like, all right, this getting a little iffy. But for the most part, I did fine. But yeah. that fishing boat, hell no. So if that's the case, then shit, yeah, I definitely would have done that. Yeah. The only problem is, I get claustrophobic. So yeah, those, those cabins, cabins are tiny. Whew. Yeah. Know. I've been on four cruises. One of them was a super cheap, like my parents won some, go to some timeshare meeting bullshit. And me and my best friend, Darren, at the time, we were we got put in a very, very front cabin. Well, the boat goes up and down the whole time. 
I was fine. It was a four day cruise. I was fine the whole cruise, but we spent four days in Fort Lauderdale afterwards. I had to sleep with my foot on the ground. Like I had a hangover, but I'm 13. I'd never had a hangover in my life <laughs> because it felt like the whole hotel room was doing this after I got off the boat. Yep. And that lasted four days after I got off the boat. And you wonder why sailors can walk everywhere <laughs> when they're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what pissed me off about getting off the fishing boat. I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Stable land. No. Like I <laughs> bet sleeping that night was awful. Dude, the whole next two days was terrible. Yeah. Like it it does not immediately get better. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, I could stop throwing up, but I'm like, I feel I like... I never really had that even after, like, a deployment. Yeah, it must be nice. I don't know. You were probably on some big boats, though. No, I was on a cruiser. Oh, really? Yeah. So not, not like... And I was in the Atlantic, so I was yeah, overseas that... and went around the Horn of Africa and everything. Nice. You just but got better inner ear inertia. And... I don't know. It was just... I, like, we could always tell, because every time we pulled into a port, people that were seasick, they were there for the three days, and they were good. As soon as we got back out to sea, three days they were puking, and then after that they finally got better. <laughs> but it was like every time we got to land, it's like they reset, their brain re- would reset, and they'd get sick again. It's like, what in the world? Sounds miserable. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I always I wondered that. I'm like, what if you get, get on a Navy ship and you realize you don't have your sea legs? No, you're puking. Because, I I mean, I I got to the point where I, was, I had nothing left. I was just picking at a bile, and like, how long will that go on for? It just depends on how bad you get it, really. Like, I never really got it. The the worst I ever got is when we were in, like, 20 to 30-foot swells. I'd get a really nasty headache, and that'd be about it. But the captain, usually if you're in that rough of seas, he's like, the only people that should be out are people that are standing their watches, and that's it. Or if you need to go eat, that's it. Go back to your rack and just sleep. <laughs> See, it's weird because I only felt that way when we slept on the very front of the boat where it was constantly going up and down, but... But me and my wife went on a cruise alone when we first met. And I remember one night at dinner, I mean, you could see our drinks like literally just yeah. listing like this. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have any problem. We didn't yeah. take any meds or anything. Yeah. Some people. But our just, cabin wasn't, in, our cabin was in the back and yeah. up versus front and low. Yeah. I don't know. Like I never really got sick at all. Like we, there was times where we were pretty much walking sideways or if you could jump from the bottom of the ladder well all the way up like three f- flights and <laughs> just be here and oh. there. <laughs> That's. Talk about claustrophobic. That being on a navy ship, especially a submarine, I uh, I don't think I could do sub life. But yeah, like there's three of us. They call them coffin racks, and they it's three people stack pretty much. And usually lower ranks, the very bottom or the top. And then if you have rank, you're in the middle. So. I mean, which, I mean, obviously I don't want to be in the middle, but wouldn't the bottom be the best because then you can just get up and walk the lowest down. on yeah. the boat is supposed to, the lower and further back on the boat you can get the less you feel anything. Yeah. But in a cabin, you're not going to notice much yeah. about two foot. Like literally my, like where my pillow was, I was up against the wall and you could hear the waves. <laughs> so it's like you're going to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I have plenty of people that get on my boat. I have a 24 foot open bow and they think, oh, riding up front is the way to go. It's like, no, if we're on the Ozarks <laughs> and it's a Saturday, yeah. you are in for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I definitely want to go on a boat ride. Chris, Sold his boat before I could go on a boat, right? Mine's for sale, so as long as it doesn't get sold before, then you're welcome out. Yeah, I'm definitely not buying it, that's for sure. (laughs) If I'm buying anything, it's going to be some jet skis. (laughs) Well, I don't know. You said Florida, too. You said you wanted a pool. Oh, I want to go to Florida. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, if we don't have any kids, I wouldn't mind moving to Florida. Yeah. We've thought about the same. I would love to have one of those houses with the canals right in your backyard where you just step onto your boat and go uh, to the ocean. My (laughs) cousin does. They have a house up in Ocean City, Maryland, and they just bought a house down in Boca Raton that has that. And we we toured it, but they were kind of doing some remodeling. But, yeah, they have that canal that you take the boat out. Their backyard's not as nice and extravagant in the Florida house as it is in Ocean City. Like, Ocean City, it's like – obviously, they're – Bright on the ocean. Uh, if you've ever been to Ocean City, they have that boardwalk. Yeah. Uh, and they're just on the other side of that. And you can see that uh, National Park Island. But yeah, it's Florida. I don't know. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of people there, but I like warm weather. But I hate hot weather. And it's super humid down there oh, all the yeah, time. It's, it, 
It's crazy how humid it is here, and it, it's way more humid. There. I've never been oh, down yeah. there in the summer, so maybe we need to go down there in the summer before we decide to move there. <laughs> Make like, it up your decision. We went, yeah, we went there on our mini honeymoon in May, and it was hot, but I don't know. I just If I could have a pool. I think I would <laughs> sacrifice really hot in June, July, August for still nice in December. You like if I was that, close but... to the ocean, like I, I told Chris, I'm like, the only way I'm moving to Florida is if I'm near the ocean. Like, oh, yeah. Like Boca Raton, Deerfield, anywhere there. I'm not moving to like Orlando or somewhere. Like I, I want to be in a quick car ride. Like in no time, we're going to be at a beach. That's the only way I'm moving there. I don't know. I, can't, I don't know. They're gun friendly or down there kind of. For the most part, <laughs> I mean, there's still. If you want to live near a beach and be gun friendly, it's probably your best option. Well, Texas, yeah. yeah. Oh, the beaches down there, the Galveston sucks. Yeah, but you're more gun friendly. Gulf Shores. I don't want to be that close to Mexico. I've I've worked a lot down there in that part of Texas. I, I Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. Which else do you want to live on, Gulf or Atlantic? Gulf. <laughs> Me, Atlantic. Really. But the Gulf is a lot calmer and nicer beaches. From an insurance standpoint, probably need to stay away from the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Somebody's calling my work phone over there. <laughs> Who calls their adjuster at 845 at night? Come on Someone now. that's impatient. <laughs> that or that, that's that been somebody else's phone number, so I get a lot of spam text messages and stuff from this whoever is owned that. insurance yeah. warranty. Let like, you know that we've tried to reach you. My time. name is not Dylan with a Y. I that get people that me. call me because... People spam fake numbers and they use my number to call people. Like, I just got a call from this number. No, you didn't. Yeah, I love the insurance ones. We can get your car warranty. All right, what do you got? I was like, 1917 Ford Model A. <laughs> Click. <laughs> <laughs> you waste my time with moisture. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I think we should probably wrap this one up. We've been yeah. going for a hot minute on this one. Yeah, I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. Well, we appreciate you joining us jacob thanks yeah, for having me on I, we appreciate you bringing the um woodford. woodford i'm glad it was something you wanted to try because i didn't really tell you till the day before that's that's fine been on my radar for a while i just haven't pulled the trigger on it yeah and it was good too yeah would recommend i liked it awesome so yeah black black betty's on social media yeah. <laughs> she's not getting banned is she no Nice. Oh, that's good. Oh, it must be nice to like be in band on social media. <laughs> you need to branch out your hobbies. <laughs> yep. Well, we appreciate you guys watching. Um, check us out on Facebook as now we're not banned from Zig Tactical. <laughs> uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, check out Shotgun Studio. Doing some more production side stuff over there. Hunter always says, check out our merch. That's a work <laughs> in progress. Yeah. Will be for a while. <laughs> so, yeah. We will see you guys on the next episode. Have a good one.